This video is going to cover section 12.5 on prediction. So we're going to look back at our third exam final exam example. We found the equation of the line of best fit for the final exam grade as a function of the grade on the third exam. So now we can use that least squares regression line for prediction. So that's what Excel does when they do the trend line, they do the least squares regression. We can predict um, y hat values for x that are between observed x values in the data set. Um, and when we do that, it's called interpolation. So like inter inside, um, sometimes these words are hard to remember. And when we predict y hat values for x values that are beyond or outside the observed x values in our data, that's called extrapolation. So extra outside, inter inside. Extrapolation um, can produce unrealistic forecasts. Um, sometimes those predictions are not as accurate or reasonable as when we use it interpolation. So our line has an equation y hat equals negative 264.38 plus 6.108x. We examined the scatter plot. We show that the correlation coefficient was significant. Um, so let's go back to Excel briefly because we didn't um, we did it for the endorsements example but just to show again r equals if we want to know what the r value is we're given r squared so we're going to do equals sq rt and we're going to type in that r squared number here so we're going to type in uh, 0 0.7308 that's where we get that R value of 0 0.85487. Um, so we can use, um, so the correlation coefficient was significant, right? It's greater than 0 0.7. And so we can use the best fit line for prediction. If it was low, we might not want to use it. We might be looking for something maybe nonlinear. So the domain for the scatter plot is the spread of the X values. And in this case, the X values went from 65 to 75. If we look at the third exam scores, our lowest was a 65 um, and our biggest one here was a 75. This data wasn't ordered. We haven't talked about ordering multiple columns of data. If you wanted to, you would want to make sure you keep them together. So I would highlight both of them. I wouldn't want to just sort the third exam scores and leave the final exam scores alone because then they wouldn't be connected in the right pairs. But I can do it where I highlight both columns and I can go to data. And again, more than one column, you're going to have to use that pull out, um, pop out dialog box. And I could sort by third exam score because I have that upper title in those columns. It gives me like a name for it. So we could do it this way. And if you watch the data, when I click OK, both of them change together. OK, so the points are still ordered together. Um, so you could do that if you just wanted to see what your range of X values were, your domain. So here we have 65 as our minimum, 75 is our maximum. So if we want to predict what the final exam score would be for a student um, who earned a 73 on the final exam, so 73 is between 65 and 75. So we are using interpolation for the prediction, and that tends to be more re realistic, and we can be fairly confident in that prediction. So we're going to plug 73 into the equation for the x. Um, and give us it's going to give us a y value of 181.5 but i'm going to show you in excel how to do that so sometimes i like to write you know what am i doing so x equals 73 and then over here i'm going to type equals um, and i'm just going to take it off of here we wrote it differently on the slide but 6.108 times what's that value we're looking at 73 and then minus 264.38. And when I hit enter, it gives me the y value for x equals 73. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can do it by hand with a calculator. You could kind of turn it into a function like I could just type in equals, um, what is it? Sorry, 6.108 times. And I could go over here. Um, and I could click on these and then drag it down. I would I would get um, you know the y val the y hat values here. 
Um, so there's lots of different ways you could do it, but so this is how I did it. I did equals 6.108 times that value I'm looking for, 73 minus 264.38. So we get a y value of 181.5. But if we wanted to try to predict the final exam score of a student who earned an 80 on the third exam, that's outside of our domain of 65 to 75. So um, that's extrapolation and it tends to be less realistic. So as you can see, when we plug it in, we get a value of 224.26. And the final exam is out of 200, so that's not realistic. So let's try it. So x equals 80. And remember, when I type in my equation, I always start with equals. And it's going to be 6.108 times the 80. That's what's going in for my x value, minus 264.38. And I get that 224.26. So again, that 224.26 isn't realistic because the highest um, score on the final exam can only be a 200. Um, so you have to think about when you're doing these predictions, interpolation is more accurate, more realistic, more reliable. Extrapolation, you can still use it for prediction. Just remember, you might get unreasonable um, results when you do that. So now looking at our endorsement deal, example. So remember, it was the number of endorsements and how much a player made um, in a year. So we are going to look at a few things. Um, so we talked about this a little bit in the last video. Is the correlation positive, negative, or none? Is it strong or weak correlation? So if you look at that red line, um, if you look at the equation and the R squared value, so our R squared value was 0 0.9577, and we did the R value. We took the square root of that. Um, go through the questions and then come up with the answer. So it's a strong positive correlation. So it's sloping upwards, um, and the points seem pretty close to that line. That's what tells us it's strong. Uh, but the correlation coefficient, and is it significant? So that's when we square rooted R squared, um, and it was 0.9786, and that is significant. It's greater than 0 0.7. So the coefficient of determination is the R squared that Excel gives us. It is 0 0.9577, and that means that like a little bit less than 96% of the variation in the amount of money a player makes is due to the variation in the number of endorsements. And only about 4% of the data, a little more than 4% of the data cannot be explained by that variability. Oh, and using the equation, find the amount of money made if a player has seven endorsements. And is it a good estimate? So. If we look at the number of endorsements over here in our chart, they go from zero endorsements to a high of five endorsements. So seven is gonna be outside of that domain. That's extrapolation. It may not be a good um, estimate or prediction. So let's go over here to Excel to our endorsements tab. And let's say X equals seven and let's type it in. So equals 1.9875 times 7 plus 2.2336. So I'm using the equation over here on my chart, and I'm using the x value of 7. So that gives me a value of $16.1415 million um, that we are predicting that a pa patient... <laughs> That a player would make if they had seven endorsements in a year. So again, um, because it's extrapolation, it may not be a good estimate. Um, one of the things they say, and you hear it a lot with finance, is like past performance is not indicative of future returns. Uh, and that means what happens in the future may not be the same as what's happened in the past. So if we use what happened in the past to predict, it may not be accurate. And that's the same kind of situation that we could talk about here, right? So if this trend continues, then that 16 plus million might be a good estimate. Um, but maybe things drop off after a certain number of endorsements. Maybe it sort of levels off. 
um, you would need more data to, to really know the answer to that. So that's the end of the section uh, 12.5 on using the linear regression models to make predictions.